Friday morning and we will look again at the, the flood of Noah and ask some of those mysterious questions about the book of Genesis. One of those questions is this, can a loving, merciful, kind God who is full of grace destroy that which he loves? Now, we have uh, a lot of people who would say no, because God is a loving God, he will not uh, condemn anyone to hell, he does not destroy humanity, he is a loving and kind God. In fact, there was a Southern Baptist pastor not too long ago who wrote a book called Love Wins. His name's Rob Bell, and he was pastor of a rather large church, and he took the approach that if God sends anybody to hell, that means God failed, but love is always going to win. That is, because God loves uh, humanity and he loves mankind, he is going to make sure that mankind does not fail, that man will go to heaven. All men will go to heaven. And now that's been around for uh, millennia. There have been people who have believed those things, but it's becoming a rather popular view in our day and time. But as we look at the mystery of Noah, we find out that God, even though he is a loving and kind God, also is a holy God. Now, even though he loves humanity, he is also holy. Now, again, in chapter number six, I want you to notice the heart of God. In chapter six, verse six, it says, And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So that the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. We must recognize that when we look at a story like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah or like the destruction of the world through a flood or when we read scriptures in the, Old, uh, in the New Testament that talks about what's going to happen in the future as Jesus talks about some are going to be cast into hell where they're weeping and gnashing of teeth and others are going to go into the kingdom. When we talk about those, that is not symbolic. Uh, that is not allegoric. It, it is actually true. It is there are people who are going to be destroyed and are going to go to hell. God is a God of love and mercy, and certainly he's, He is gracious. But God also is a God who is holy. He will not tolerate sin. And so Moses here points out the heart of God. In the text, he talks about also his holiness. He doesn't use the word holiness, but the heart of God is breaking. Now, you can only grieve someone who actually loves something. For instance, if you don't really love someone, you're not going to be grieved if something bad happens to them or if they die. If you don't really care, you may be sorry, you may have other feelings, you're not going to be grieved. But God was grieved in his heart over the human condition and over the fact that he was going to have to destroy them. So that reveals to us the heart of God. But then his actions reveal his holiness. Even though God loved mankind, God will and must destroy mankind when he becomes unholy. But I want you to notice in verse 8, it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So even in the midst of when God is ready to judge and God is ready to destroy, there is grace. And that is God's riches at Christ's expense, that God has provided a way for those who will seek him a way of salvation. So though he is a God of justice and a God of judgment and a God of condemnation and a God who will cast people to hell, he's also a God of love and mercy and he shows grace to those uh, that he uh, chooses to, to show grace to. And make sure that you walk in such a way as did Noah, that uh, you also will find mercy and grace in the eyes of God. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you that there is mercy and grace found only in Christ. We recognize that we don't deserve mercy. We don't deserve grace. It's something you, you richly give to us because we seek Christ and his kingdom. But Father, we know even in that, you sought us first. We didn't come seeking you. You sought us first, and your Holy Spirit convicted us and drew us to yourself. Help us to so walk in the way that we represent you upon this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.